Hey guys, Danny here with another installment of the X5 Transfer Case Saga. So, in the last episode we removed the transfer case from the X5 and I have it here now on my workbench. And now you can kind of see what was wrong with it. I don't know how well you could see in there, but the splines in there are pretty messed up from the uh, front drive shaft stripping out. So, we're not going to do, be doing anything with this transfer case. I already ordered a, uh, a new replacement, or a used replacement rather. But, I just figured, you know, in the interest of science, let's tear this thing open and uh, take a look and see what a 214,000 mile transfer case looks like on the inside. There are these uh, E14 Torx bolts all around the perimeter of it. So once we take those off, we should be able to pry this thing open. So, uh, let's do this. Alright, so all of the bolts are now out. That was pretty easy. I just used a uh, ratchet and my little um, screwdriver, electric screwdriver, whatever it is. And then, also make note, you have to unclip this little breather. You know, just kind of swing it out of the way. That way it doesn't get in the back of the, in the way of the case coming off. And now we should be able to try and pop this thing off. So let's give that a shot. And there we have it, ladies and gents. Crack this thing open. I uh, needed a little bit of help with my, uh, from my good old friend, BFH. And there you go, that's the inside of the uh, 214,000 mile transfer case. And actually, if it wasn't for that bad output spline, the, I would reuse this. All the gears are really nice. Everything looks to be really clean in here. You know, this thing is aged well. Look at these, everything looks so good, but check out that chain slack. That's what you don't want to see. That is a loose chain. All the bearings feel great though. Look at that. Beautiful. And everything just kind of pops apart. That's cool. Hmm. Groovy. I don't know how it all go goes back together, but uh can't be that complicated, right? <laughs> It appears to be that everything here can be uh, taken apart and put back together without any specific order. Like nothing here is keyed. Like there's no keys on the splines. It just all kind of comes together. Which makes sense because this is just a uh, transfer case and it's a simple one. It's not a transmission nor does it have you know multiple speeds or anything. This is just a simple 60-40 split. It's always a split. So. so that's it for this transfer case. I just wanted to take a look inside. I'm not going to be using much from this unless you know the other transfer case is FUBAR, but uh, let's bring the other transfer case in, crack that open, and uh, see what that looks like. Here's the, uh, the new to me transfer case. This came from another X5 4.6. It came from one in uh, New York City, which is kind of funny because it's my old hometown. This one came off of a 141,000 mile X5, so it's a lot lower mileage than mine, but uh, because it's from you know the Northeast, it's a little dirtier, a little has a little bit of surface rust, but nothing crazy, nothing that would stop it from working. But the important thing is, look at those splines. The splines are gold. Well, not literally gold, but so much better than the ones in mine. So I'm gonna take a look inside. I'm gonna crack this one open as well. And we're gonna take a look inside and we're going to see how the insides look. And I don't know, depending on how the insides look, maybe I might just grab that input shaft and swap it into my transfer case since I know my transfer case looks really good. And this time I have a rubber mallet instead of this metal one, instead of this metal hammer. So uh, it'll be a little more gentle on it.
All right, so here's the inside of the uh, 140, 1,000 mile transfer case. Honestly, it looks super clean inside here. I'm impressed. So, it's just the outside was a little grotty, but uh, I could probably clean that to an extent. I mean, this looks pretty good. The spool, you know, all the gears look great. The splines look great. So I think I am just going to use this one. Just because mine, with mine, the whole input shaft is pretty messed up and, you know, it's installed so nicely here. I don't want to take it out and potentially ruin something. So I'm just going to go with this transfer case. Just got to finish draining the rest of that fluid out. Shipping it probably would have been cheaper if that was all drained out, but oh well. Now we're going to move on to removing the, um, the chain. As you can see, the, uh, the chain is quite loose. Maybe not quite as loose as the one on my uh, 214,000 mile one, but still loose enough to necessitate replacing it. So let's, uh, let's figure out how to get that chain off. All right, so now we're gonna take, start taking this whole thing apart. So let's set aside some room for uh, some clean dry towels. So first step is gonna be removing this big, uh, I think it's a planetary gear set? I don't know, my knowledge of this stuff is like non-existent, so bear with me here. We're gonna remove this, so that's pretty easy. There's a spacer up here, so, you know, keep that in mind, see? There's a spacer right there, so make sure you uh, don't lose it. Doesn't matter which way it faces, just keep it there. And then we lift this up and out. Very nice. Just put that down here. And keep in mind, this has a spacer on the other side as well, so make sure you have both of those spacers, otherwise stuff will not go together well. So now we have access to this, yeah, which are just the gears now. Now we have to figure out how to remove these to gain access to the chain. Alright, so after some off-screen fidgeting and uh, Googling, this just can't comes off. You just gotta pry it out and, you know, go at it gently and it comes right off. Huh. So, um, unlike the other tra transfer cases, this is the uh, LWX500. So this is a uh, an X54.6 only transfer, transfer case. But it was also used on some 4.4s in 2002 and 2003. These were kind of like transitional years. But uh, the NV125 has a little um, clips holding everything in. This, everything just seems to be press fitted. So, uh, yeah, and there's no spring, re and there's no um, chain retainer spring either, like the uh, NV125. So keep that in mind, you know. So now we've got the chain here. Got this old chain here, right here. See. So that's pretty. That's pretty cool. So let's move this out of the way for now. And here we have that fresh new hotness. A nice new uh, transfer case chain. Now the chain itself is the same for either the LWX500 or the NV125, so that's worth noting. But uh, as you can see, the uh, common thing that they both have is they both have this uh, blue link right there so I just rotate it around see there's that blue link I mean visually they look about the same but there's definitely a lot more slack in the old one so let's just put this toss this old one to the side and let's put this new one in so let's put the transfer case back here okay so now we want to wind it around this here the uh, the blue link should face up. We'll just stick it in here. Make sure it seats. It's a little tricky, but it'll seat eventually. Here we go. Now, once it's seated there, let's pull it taut as much as we can. Then we're gonna. This faces up like this, and then we're going to put the chain around it, and then hopefully, kind of just wedge it in there. There we go. Hear that slam? That's a good slam. Whew. Yeah, it's a lot tighter now, see? Not as not nearly as much play. 
Chain's gonna make a little more of a clack because it's still new, still hasn't been broken in. The seals here were still fine, so we're gonna reuse the seals. Also, I didn't buy new ones, so yeah. Just make sure everything's pressed in adequately, which it is, but we really wanna be sure. There we go. Everything's nice and tight. Let's clean up. All right, chain's back on. So now we're gonna put our uh, input shaft back on, making sure to, to keep both spacers where they should be. So let's pop this little sucker on. The spacer just fell off, but it's all right. It's still in there. We have to just make sure these planetary gears align, and boom! Back in business, baby. If you hold one, this can spin independently, or it'll spin both. So that's pretty cool. See? And then this front one can spin on its own, too. That's the beauty of this. And they could spin in different directions, though. I don't know why you'd want to, but... Here's how everything looks once it's been uh, put back together. You've got the planetary gears there. You've got the chain, the new chain. A lot less play than before, a lot tighter, which is great. You know, it doesn't seem that much tighter, but a couple millimeters makes a huge difference in this kind of thing. You know, it'll eliminate any of that play that we had before. And uh, yeah, everything is back together and functional. Everything rotates. So I think we're done here, which was surprisingly easy. I was expecting it to be a little more dramatic, but uh, I mean, this is a really simple transfer case, you know. If I had been rebuilding the transfer case in, say, a Range Rover, that'd be a little more tricky because that's got speeds and it's electronic. And the uh, the newer X5 transfer case has a um, a clutch in it and you know little plastic gears that control how much uh, front to back distribution of uh, torque there is. But this is dead simple, 60-40 ratio. That's how it is. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna clean up around here. I'm gonna clean up all these little edges here. Clean that up and then clean that up on this side too. And then once we put it all back together, um, or rather once all the edges are cleaned up, I'm gonna put, there is no gasket that comes for this and this is not put together with a gasket. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a little bit of a, a uh, little bit of gray RTV and the instructions for that are to, you know, clean the surface, apply, I'm gonna use some brake clean on this too to get the grease off. So apply it all around to a clean surface, then Put the pieces together, lightly bolt them together, let it set for about an hour, and then we torque them down to the final value. And then that'll be it for the transfer case. All right, so now we've cleaned all the surfaces. They look really good and clean. I ran over everything with some brake clean. All the internals look pretty clean. It's really sunny in here, sorry about that. See, we got this all clean as well. So it looks pretty good. Well, the gasketing surfaces look pretty good. The rest is still pretty dirty, like the case itself. Kind of nasty, but I'll probably clean it up after it's all sealed up. In any case, we're going to be using some of this uh, ultra black gasket maker, Hermitex. We're going to put a little thin bead all around, then we're going to finger tighten the bolts and let it set for about an hour. So all the bolts are now in, 
it's really sunny, but yeah, they're all in here. So I, uh, I just put them in hand tight, and you can kind of see where the, some of that RTV is seeping out a little bit. You can see some of it seeping out here too. But that's how it's supposed to do, that's how it's supposed to go. So we hand tightened it, now we're going to let it sit for about an hour or so, let it cure a bit, and then we're going to torque this down to the final uh, specifications. So it's been about an hour, hour and a half. The RTV has definitely had enough time to set now. So now we're going to use a uh, torque wrench and just do all these bolts to about 12 foot-pounds. I saw that's what a guy did in another video. So that's what I'm going to go with. These don't need to be super high torque anyways. So that's 12 foot-pounds or 144 inch-pounds if you're using a smaller torque wrench like I am. So I'm going to do that in kind of a crisscross pattern. Alright, so I've torqued down all of these bolts to about 12 foot-pounds. I also removed the old Guibo that was on there, that came from the previous owner. I'm going to use mine because mine's in better shape. And I uh, cleaned it up a little bit, so it doesn't look too bad now. So now is the uh, fun part, where we get to reinstall this. But uh, first, we got to reinstall it with this fancy new extended drive shaft. This one's about an inch longer than the, re than the usual one, than the factory one rather. And this is supposed to prevent that uh, slippage problem from ever happening again. So I'm pretty stoked about that. So now the transfer case is back under the car, along with the new front drive shaft, which you can see over there. I installed it loosely for now because since it's the inch uh, longer extended version, I have to kind of install it with this transfer case, otherwise it won't go in properly. So I'm going to have to wrangle that and the transfer case on at the same time but that'll be in the next episode so that's it for this one and uh thanks for watching guys and you know like comment subscribe whatever you want to do and i'll see you in the next one